Mr. Imran, I hate to have to break it to you, but you are an ignorant fool. You're a misogynistic, ignorant fool. You're a condescending, misogynistic, ignorant fool. I was not planning on making another video for, uh, well, at least a month, but I cannot keep quiet when I see this. So what got to me and why couldn't I sort this out with him? Well, Imran ibn Mansur doesn't allow any personal communication with other people and relies on censorship to keep out the reality he hates so much and is so afraid of. But maybe this short video will make him pause, switch on his brain and think for just a moment using both brain cells. He reminds me of the little the, the children in Africa who were playing car by pushing old tires along the roadside and their faces when they saw a real car drive past. But unlike these children, however, who, who watched with big eyes and followed the car, Mr. Imran runs away and climbs back into his 7th century bubble, which protects him from the realities of today's real world. He promotes a peer of his Dawa films, who, well, shares the intellectual restrictions, and Aira, my favorite mental institution. But now, why do I call him a misogynistic fool? There was a woman sitting in front of me. You've got presenters that are female. Present the, the chairperson of the event. Forgive me, like, I, am I in a nightclub? Am I in a bar or am I in an Islamic event? That's why. The journalist Miriam Francois Sarab was host and this condescending twat comments this. And why do I call him a fool? It makes sense like a theory. Now, when they come up with more evidences, which the theory of evolution has changed, it's not been, it's not been you know, consistent throughout. There have been new discoveries and evidences to shift it this way and that way. Well, that's why. Okay, so let's look at some facts and see what all his, <laughs> his evidences are worth. The name Adam appears many times in the translations of the Quran, as the translators have added the name in brackets when they thought the Quran was referring to Adam. But actually it's only something like 15 or 20 times, and not actually in connection with creation either. And as always, the Quran is vague and ambiguous. It says that, like Jesus, Adam was created from dust. Or it could mean that, like Adam, Jesus was created from dust. Both versions are grammatically possible. Eve is not mentioned by name and just suddenly appears without mentioning the process or any details. And the fact that Allah says that he created Hawa from the, from, the, from, from the rib of Adam Our little Quran scholar errs all the time, yet wants to teach others. What? His ignorance? Or maybe that ants can talk to a human, or even better, that the moon was split in half not so long ago? That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? He split the moon. The Quran does not state where this creation took place, but because the serpent promises them a kingdom that never decays or deteriorates, it would seem this was on earth, with the promise of a better place, heaven. The sentence that says, you will not be thirsty therein, or be too hot from the sun, substantiates a location on earth. Or, can a heavenly garden be so close to our sun that it gets hot there? Well, the Quran does not specify anything, and it's only down to interpretation. Would you find dust in heaven? They, I mean, they were in an unspecified garden ate some forbidden fruit and were told to go down, i.e. go down on their knees and repent, and not being taken to the place where the snake had promised them. The lying snake. <laughs> so, what does our Mr. Imran actually have to say? Well, he refers to Yasir Qadi a lot, a, a bigot who is obstinately and zealously attached to his book, a fanatic when it comes to choosing between reality and the Quran, and an ignoramus when it comes to evolution. Imagine a series of dominoes, and this is evolution. And we are the final domino. Humankind is the final domino. And if you were to see the final domino fall, the logical presumption is all of these dominoes led to this final domino. Well, the, the, the Quran is, according to this guy, incapable of a causal relationship between humans and apes. <laughs> He says that a few years ago the Quran could have been interpreted to paint a static flat earth and this has been what he calls adjusted. 
Now, in a few years, he will come back and say the same about evolution, but for now, he refuses and claims that science should remain in its place, <laughs> which is outside of religion. We need to put science in its proper place. But hang on a minute. Does science ever mention anyone called Adam? No. Does science make any claims regarding the creation of humans? Nope. Does science mention any god? Nope. Does science mention a religion? No. So what the fourth is his problem? Why this constant whining about science being so limited and unable to prove something it's not meant to prove? Why are they so afraid? Our Mr. Imran is even worse, much worse. I mean, he made a video called Richard Dawkins Helps Prove a Quranic Miracle. I mean, this demonstrates his childish disposition. He says, well, he, he will prove that the Quran is the word of a God, which he does not. He says he will do this via the God delusion, which set out to disprove God, which actually it did not. He says this then proves the existence of a god, which it does not. I mean, in his primitive and childish brain, the fact that life on earth is dependent on water to survive is the same as the Quran saying life was created from water. <laughs> and then he wants to recruit people to learn how to address academic and intellectual attacks on Islam from him. Because nature uses the mechanisms of evolution, this constitutes an attack on Islam. I mean, this is even worse than old sources. In South Africa, we have a saying, if your feet smell and your nose is running, you're upside down. Well, there's something very much upside down here if nature should adhere to the rules and concepts in a book. But let's start at the beginning of the video, which caught my attention. I mean, I initially laughed it off as simply too primitive. And it was only when I got pointed at a second time around and saw how many people are watching this, and then I got to some sentences towards the end, which I'll point out later, that I decided to address it. Our wannabe teacher here seems to have returned from the evolution conference organized by Adam Deem. He seems a bit agitated and fears for the worst if Muslims come across evolution without any explanation by a theologian. The theory of evolution is basically stating that things change, that the, that the species, that the living species, they change over time, they evolve. The theory of evolution does not only state that living species change over time. And I have some bad news for you. You are a type of ape, just like all other humans. And no, the theory of evolution does not mention Adam. The theory of evolution also does not mention any parents of Adam. If Adam had parents, then this is not the fault of evolution, but life. Science is not there to provide only a naturalistic explanation to explain the world. If the evidence leads to a supernatural being, then that is the result. There is no predefined goal which needs to be verified, but the other way around. This might come as a surprise to you. When will these simpletons learn this? Science is a tool. It is not a worldview or an ideology. It's just like a hammer. It has a limited function. Science looks at existing things in nature. It analyzes probes, measures, and describes. It does not address gods or ghosts. What makes the sky look blue? What causes stars to die? What is hail? What are earthquakes? Science never asks, what is a god? Science is always looking for more precision and better explanations. You want to drive the T model, and science enables a car with ESP and nine airbags. If science measures the speed of light, does that influence the speed of light? No. If science measures the effects of evolution, does that affect evolution? No, of course not. So the fact that humans have developed an explanation called theory of evolution does not change or influence evolution. Evolution does not care what we do when we describe the mechanisms. Evolution does not care about any atom in any book. Evolution 
took something like, what, 3,900 million years to come up with humans. Why can't you simply say thank you and enjoy your life instead of now complaining and whining over who did what to whom and when? I mean, if any person wants to believe in a supernatural being, go ahead. Just don't teach this as science. Religion works on faith and not facts. Science works on facts and not faith. They do not mix. Leave it that way. The Quran says it has divine origins. Is there proof for this? No. You can't even prove the existence of the divine. So saying that the Quran is of divine origins without having shown the existence of the divine itself requires faith. Now you either accept that or you need to change your interpretation of the book. As Peter Durkais used to say, adapt or die. So the Quran is here crystal clearly explaining to us. No, there is no crystal clear explanation. Mr. Imran is making this up. Does not know the Quran yet teaches others? Come on, man, you need to focus and learn what is what. There used to be a guy who gave us the most bizarre stories and fairy tales, but he knew the Quran inside out. Go and learn from Zakir Naik. We can logically, rationally prove that it is the divine word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No questions asked. You cannot prove rationally and logically anything. I mean, if you could, there would be no atheists. No, all you have is faith, not evidence. If the, well, the Quran is true, you can go and slap the corpse of Riva Steenkamp and see if she gets up and points out Oscar Pistorius as her killer. Now, that would be impressive. The Quran says in 273 you can do that. Demonstrate it, prove it, or please shut up. For example, the Quran insinuates to the earth being round in several ayahs. No, the Quran never says earth is round, not once. And it would be wrong too. It's spherical. Does the Quran use the word spherical? Nope. So stop making stuff up and learn what the Quran says before you try and teach it to others. The Quran tells us that everything started at one universal point. No, the Quran does not say everything started at one universal point. Stop making stuff up and learn what the Quran says. And no, Einstein did not discover the Big Bang. A Catholic did. Oh boy. I mean, here's some personal advice, and it's free too. If you say the opposite of what Aira and Dava films say, you are closer to the truth. If a Muslim says that there is proof that all life, especially human life, is created by a god, and this god never makes a mistake, isn't taking clay and creating conjoined twins technically a mistake? The Quran claims that Adam, simply meaning man, is formed first and then a female. While we know from reality that in biology the female is the default form and the male develops from the female the other way around. The Quran as somehow supporting the modern doctrine of human evolution. Yeah, what can you do if people tell you this nonsense? It's not a doctrine. Doctrine is a system or a codification of belief. It has nothing to do with, 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 with facts or something. And then Mr. Imran goes back and he tells us the story of a girl crying because evolution and science relate the facts to Adam. This is the level of ignorance and misinformation. Instead of having an evolutionary biologist tell them what the facts are and what this is all about, the ignorant theologians debate a topic where they have zero knowledge and get people even more confused, deplorable, and, and sick, if you ask me. It's, it's like having a meeting to decide what color to order the carpet in, which matches the drapes and all the participants are blind. And our intellectual featherweight now goes into a rant, slamming all Muslims who try and come to terms with reality. Mr. Imran, just like Ayera, wants to keep the followers of the Quran dumbed down. He wants others to remain as ignorant and uneducated as he is. He again fabricates some idiotic claims regarding proof for the origins of the Quran and never realizes that evolution does not encroach on the Quran narrative at all. This horrible little man then 
utters the two sentences which I mentioned earlier, which prompted me to make this video. Right. Be careful who you take your knowledge from. Right, because your kids will end up believing this stuff. Be careful where you get your knowledge from. And the other one is, your kids will end up believing this stuff. This primitive and despicable being thinks nothing of indoctrinating children with this nonsense, keeping them back so that they can watch with big eyes how reality progresses, leaving them behind.